So we touched on this damage function, but that kind of comes down to uh, modeling uh, the impacts to simulate past and future changes. When we say past changes, obviously we need data for that as well. So uncertainties in simulating the climate change and its impacts come back to us. We already looked at it a little bit. We will revisit it here. So model uncertainty uh, and uncertainty due to the way in which model is used uh, can be two different things. Uh, people may apply it in a way that uh, uh, is not supposed to be uh, what the model is designed for. Uh, epistemic uncertainty basically comes from a lack of knowledge about the system itself. Uh, so we parameterize it or represent it in some way with uh, some intrinsic uncertainty introduced because of, the, let's say, the process understanding that's missing. Uh, so in principle, it can be reduced by obtaining more information. There are also what are called irreducible uncertainties. For example, uh, more knowledge about aerosols, interactions, uh, at, uh, indirect impacts with clouds and so on may not necessarily reduce the uncertainty but it increases knowledge, so we have to be careful about those as well. Monitoring programs, uh, we will look at like GEOS, the Global Earth Observing System of Systems, uh, etc. are uh, kind of aimed at reducing these uncertainties and increasing process understanding needed to improve the models. Stochastic uncertainty comes from inherent randomness and variability of the system itself. It's a nonlinear system. So for this aspect of uncertainty, uh, obtaining more data will not necessarily reduce the envelope of uh, possibilities. Okay. Uh, so one program that's been engaged uh, globally at uh, observing the Earth system for disasters, health, energy, climate, agriculture, ecosystem, biodiversity, water and weather uh, is the GEOS and there are other details involved in there like uh, shorter time scale El Nino prediction systems in the tropics, uh, volunteer observing ships, long term observations with uh, floats in the ocean that go up and down and so on. All those kinds of informations, uh, including ecological parameters from satellites, etc., are used to make this map which we have already looked at before. Uh, it's a synthesis of all uh, available data to look at the observed impacts that are attributable to climate change in physical systems like glaciers, uh, rivers, uh, coastal erosion and so on, uh, and biological systems like terrestrial ecosystems, wildfires, marine ecosystems, and human and managed systems, so food production, uh, livelihoods, health uh, and or economics and there are also regional scale impacts indicated here and they are indicated with these uh, bar charts here, uh, the bars next to them which uh, refer to the confidence we have them very low, low, uh, medium, high and very high. Uh, I won't go into the details but you can stare at it uh, at your own leisure what needs to be pointed out is that all uh, continents on Earth, including the polar regions, are now impacted by anthropogenic climate change in all systems, physical, biological, and human and managed systems. Uh, so even the small islands in the middle of the oceans are impacted. Okay, so out in the uh, open also uh, marine ecosystems are uh, impacted. So you can see all the continents here uh, impacted by these. So we have a very good evid evidence of uh, detectable changes, impacts that are attributable to uh, climate change. You already know what attribution means. So. There are models like these from Potsdam uh, which uh, look at climate impacts uh, and model them. So what is the difference between Earth system models and these? These are basically focused much more on impacts and not so much on climate itself. So climate is kind of a uh, forcing. So external processes, models and scenarios, uh, for example, from IPCC are used. Uh, to force the integrated assessment model framework that we talked about and there is a simplified earth 
model which uh, talks about uh, atmosphere, ice sheet dynamics, ocean circulation, and they include uh, climate, water, agriculture, forest, etc. in addition to uh, agricultural economy, energy economy, and downscaling uh, to do these uh, impacts at scale, and natural and agricultural vegetation, and so on. Again, a brief introduction to the model and the main thing to remember is that earth system models the, are focused on the uh, biosphere and uh, geosphere uh, terrestrial ecosystems marine ecosystems ocean atmosphere glaciers and so on whereas impact models are taking all that and doing the impacts uh, the idea is that there should be a two-way interaction between them as we saw uh, was done for creating the RCPs, for example, iteration between integrated assessment models and earth system models. Uh, model uncertainties, we have looked at, at this in various uh, uh, depictions already. So this is going from scales of 100 kilometers to global scales and time scale of uh, less than a year to uh, millions million year time scales um, and the resolutions of the models go from high medium limited and low so when you want to have uh, long simulations obviously you can only have medium or uh, low or limited uh, resolutions the grid points that represent the earth is what we call the resolution if we remember so all the phenomena are involved here and their scales so we need to understand uh, what are the uh, uncertainties of these uh, processes we already talked about some of these so we want to have socio-economic uh, processes for example future factors influencing climate change not just being impacted by climate change so population economic growth future technologies good and bad energy consumption, good and bad, land use and agriculture, good and bad, uh, and key processes influencing climate change, obviously, feedbacks uh, like clouds, uh, ice albedo feedback, biogeochemical feedback, uh, oceanic delay in the sense ocean can store the heat for a long time and release it, so we have to worry about that. Uh, strength of the forcing, so rate of change of, let's say, radiative forcing, emissions, and so on, and short-term variabilities uh, from sub-seasonal to seasonal time scales or year to decade uh, time scales. Okay. So obviously, uncertainties uh, arise from combination of forcing and model response that we talked about. RCPs, in some sense, represent that range. So here is the historic simulation where models are reasonably capturing the trends, not year-to-year -year variability as we talked about. Uh, so this is looking at temperature for various scenarios. This is looking at Northern Hemisphere September sea ice extent. Why do we look at September? Because um, that's the end of Northern Hemisphere summer. Whatever ice that remains is going to determine how much more it's going to grow in the fall and winter months. Uh, if it's disappearing in September greatly, then that's bad news for rebuilding it uh, in the winter. So you, as you can expect, uh, the uh, business as usual scenario of RCP 8.5 uh, can make it disappear uh, fairly fast uh, by 2050 or just thereafter. Okay, so looking at the future of human society, which is basically unpredictable, uh, we have to worry about the cascades of uncertainty in the system. So we have emission scenarios, carbon cycle response, global climate sensitivity to that. Remember climate sensitivity that we talked about? How much warming you get when you double the CO2 and ha hold it there? You have to worry about the residence time of uh, carbon, CO2 and other greenhouse gases as well as the adjustment of the system to this uh, emission that is already pu been put in. Regional climate scenarios obviously get more uncertain when we downscale or do some other approach because global uh, climate models are not capturing the regional scales very well yet and the range of possibilities. So you can see these uh, range is increasing as we go this way. So 
what are the low regret and no regret options to mitigation and adaptation that's what you have to worry about as we said you cannot build a huge dam and then take it away if you don't if it doesn't work out so these have to be done very well and no regret options basically means you can do it and there is no harm uh, done even if it doesn't work or low regret where the cost is not prohibitive for trying something and the uh, unintended consequences are not dangerous okay so the envelope of uncertainty is shown here uh, in terms of the range of adaptation responses starting with future society with its population technology options carbon capture and sequestration renewable energies uh, transportation options determining greenhouse gas emissions uh, going into climate models regional scenarios impact model which is what we are talking about local impacts and adaptation is all local so it requires reliable information at local scales so that's the challenge which the IPCC faces uh, as we will see um, and it's being done now uh, as comprehensively as possible and we'll see briefly uh, how these things uh, have evolved over time